Thank you for joining us for Sermons on Demand from Friendship Grace Brethren Church. We provide these videos as a way to share the pulpit messages and teachings offered at Friendship Grace Brethren Church. If you find these videos a helpful resource, please drop us a note at info at friendshipgracebrethren.com. Now open your Bibles and get ready to dig into the Word of God. Hey, I wrote it. There's no, like, you know, taking credit, no ego going on. All right. John MacArthur says that uh, it was in his advanced age, which makes sense a lot, 85 to 95 AD, so right around the fourth gospel. All right, location. Um, a lot of it, um, a lot of it um, doesn't have some any hard hit evidence. There's no like flashing light, like I mentioned, but. Um, it matches up with Ephesus, which was a wealth and influ influential uh, port city in the Roman uh, province of Asia. And it was renowned for its temple of Artemis. So what's the whole purpose of the book? It was written to the several churches in Asia Minor, and most likely the postal route in which he was writing to them. Because it goes in order. John is writing to give encouragement that there are evil deeds out there. He's trying to give an attaboy. Just like uh, Chuck kind of gives me attaboys, and you know, we kind of tag team off each other. This would be equivalent to a grandfather giving you advice on how to live your life. We were talking on Wednesday about the stone rocker. He's in a stone rocker saying, all right, little whippersnapper. All right. John affirms that he provides assurance of eternal life to those who believe as the son of Jesus, as the son of God. So John, I know Pastor Rich covered a lot of this while I was with the youth, but it's prophetic literature. It should be uh, viewed as God's view of the news, not simply telling of the future. It doesn't have to do with the future. It's often divided into condemnation or blessings sometimes within the same book. kind of jumps around a little. Sometimes prophetic literature is simple to expose sin. A prophet speaking on God's behalf. So, I'm going to break it up a little. 1 John chapter 1, 5 through 10. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do, we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. All right. So, verse 7. The blood of Jesus washes over our body. A really high definition version of Acts. It's cleansing us of our sins. There's nothing other than the blood of Jesus that takes over of those sins of us. All right. Verse 8 says, we do not sin, we are fooling ourselves. You meet someone, they say, hey, I, I, I don't sin, you know, I'm good, I'm perfect. There's something wrong there, right, guys? They're just fooling themselves because we all sin. We just lessen our sin. All right, 3 through 17 in the same chapter. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. All right. <clears throat> to keep his commandments requires the relationship of being a follower of Christ. 
you got to put a little TLC into it. Just like you go to the doctor and, you know, you have that relationship saying, hey, doc, I'm broken. He, after a while, you have that relationship. You can't just show up and say, hey, okay, doc, unless you're broken, like Chuck. To be a follower means we have to follow his commandments and have a change. You can be a follower and not have a change, but are you truly a follower of Christ? We must be loyal to him since he sent his son to die on the cross. We covered this in After Hours, which it was really, it was awesome. I wish you guys were there. All right. Huh? You were there. You were you and your black coffee. No, sh- no cream, no sugar. Just make sure it's hot and black. So, love in First John, chapter two. Sorry, seven through seventeen. The new commandment. Beloved, I'm writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you also to love one another. Same commandment, but it's being restated. It's that flashing light, repetition. Like when we were learning how to ride a bicycle, we didn't just jump on the bicycle and say, okay, we're good, don't fall down. You had to be coached a little. This uh, This is God through John coaching us. 1 John uh, chapter 2, 18 through 19. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many an- Antichrists have come. Therefore we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all who are not of us. This is a mention and a reminder from our Heavenly Father that the Antichrist will be back. There, we don't know the time. We don't know the place. We, we don't have logistics of it, but they're coming back. So, 22 through 25. The Antichrist deny the Christian faith. <clears throat> The Antichrist is going to deny our faith. So, I mean, if you have someone coming and saying, ah, you don't need to believe that, you know. Christian, just show up on Sunday, you know, pay your 50 bucks, you're good. Not a Christian, but I'm not going to go into that. (laughs) All right. The Antichrist will deny Jesus and the Christian faith, which separates us from our outer religions that they are in this world. We have a Savior who put ourselves in the box while maintaining the box. Interesting conversation, Katrina, right? He was in the box, but he was also enduring the punishment of our sins. It's like paying your taxes uh, for someone else. 26 through 27. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is is true. There is no lie, just as it's taught you, abide in him. The Antichrist deceives the Christian faithful. Trust in God and his faithful teaching to guard, guard you against the false teaching. What's Pastor Rich always say? Test the teacher. I mean, challenge him. If he's wrong, hey, be humble, admit it, do some study. This is a warning. This is the giant flashing light with strobes and a couple other icons where it works. So in 28 to uh, chapter 3, verse 3, this, this is the purifying hope of the Lord's return, the exegetical Eschological, sorry. 
the end times. One of the most confusing, and we'll be covering a lot of that next week. So 24 through uh, chapter 4, 1 through 3, the Christian's incompatible with sin. Can't be a Christian and be rolling around in the mud uh, of sinners. I mean, you, when you go to school, you get new clothes, right? New clothes, new shoes. Now, with my other job, there's makeup and they go all that. But you get, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> but, you know what I mean, you get new stuff. So, you know what I mean, it, if you're going to get new items, that's our new body. That's the new body that, uh, that Christ gave us by becoming a follower and a child of his. You can't have that new body and still roll around in the mud with the old, old shoes and old socks from the previous year. I mean, it's a little incompatible. All right. Chapter four, four, 4 through 6, the need for sound doctrine. We need sound doctrine. You can't just have marshmallow uh, teaching. There's marshmallow teaching isn't going to help you. It's not going to give you that defense that you need when you have a coworker asking you questions. Or you meet this guy on the street at the quickie mart and says, hey, are you a follower of Christ? And he starts asking you, why is there bad things that happen in the world? Chapter 4, 7 through 10 and 11 through 21 is God's character of love and God's requirement of love. All right, 5, 1 through 5 and 6 through 12 is the victories of life in Christ and the witness of God for Christ. 13 through 17, the certainty of eternal life and answered prayers. We might have a prayer, but we think, okay, it's like the microwave, done. I prayed for a, a new Mercedes bin and it was outside. But it might happen later on. I mean, you might get a new car that you can actually afford. What we pray isn't a genie in a bottle. It's our needs that God says, okay, you need something with four wheels, a transmission, and tires. You don't need the Mercedes Benz that costs however much it does. It's a lot of money. Okay, 18 through 20 of... Um, Chapter 5 is the certainty of victory over sin and Satan, belonging to God and Christ being the true God. And 21, working for Christ and not idols, that man creates and replaces God. Idols. I think we covered this in um, youth group a while back, didn't we? Idols. Could be your cell phone, could be your car. I mean, it could be that next gadget. I have a lot of coworkers where they have to get that brand new video game. I mean, they're standing outside at 2 in the morning. That's an idol. I mean, having to get the latest technology, that's an idol. So, that was, that was First John in a nutshell. I told you we needed the seatbelt. So the author and date, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is the Apostle John. He writes this close to the writing of the other books. So the document itself identifies it, the author as the elder. In verse 1, the term elder is the Apostle John claiming his role as the pastor. It's his nonchalant way of saying, hey, I'm here. So the location, still believe it's an emphasis. And the purpose is to address the church to guard against false teachers. There are many false teachers going on back then, just like they are right now. They're going to trick and deceive others and ourselves. Satan was alive and well in this day, as it is in Lee County. So, the greeting. 2 John 1-13. through 13. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also 
who knows the truth because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father, Son, in truth and love. So the elect lady. The Apostle John uses the term the elect lady to address the church. The reason this makes sense is if you get into the fancy dancy Greek, which don't ask me to say it, please. It's a feminine, uh, it's feminine, the word Greek. Additionally, in Revelation 21 through 2 and 17, the church is called to be the bride. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adored for her husband. We go to 7. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. So the elect lady, this is what I believe the text is stating. However, many feel that the elect lady is an actual person in the church. I mean, you look at all the biblical scholars and they're fighting against each other. Is it a person or is it meaning the actual church? They didn't... The, during that time, they didn't have a fancy building where they were meeting for church. They were meeting in the living room. Like in the history of this church, we were, reading, uh, we were meeting in the living room for six months? A year? Nine? Okay. So, the outline. One through three is the introduction. establishes the premise of the book of love and peace. Every book has a beginning, an introduction. And this is setting the stage. So four through five, I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth. This is, we were commanded by the Father, and now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. Even the ones we don't, uh, we, we don't want to love. Apostle John is uh, retelling and showing the importance of the commandments to love one another. Giant flashing light. Saying, hey. Additionally, he states that there will be those who trick the church. And, there, and mentions the Antichrist. False teachers are appearing to be Christians. I know we have a couple that they're a sheep in wool's clothing. These are the ones that are selfish. I mean, they, they're more worried about their jets and their Mercedes and all that. But if we focus on the reward on earth, what's our reward going to be uh, eternally? Fire. So focus on the after rewards. Pastor Rich says, you know, the dump truck analogy. He wants like a row of like 10 dump trucks full of jewels. So, earthly rewards give us earthly consequences. Or godly rewards uh, gives us following the commandments of, that, of our Heavenly Father. We as humans, just, just as we all at work need structure. We need a set of rules. I mean, hey, love your coworker, Love your friend. Don't murder them. So it'd be more dangerous for uh, roads if we didn't have this. Like um, colonial, the speed limit was, you set the speed, we'd have a lot more accidents. So that's what's going on right there. Verse 9. Oops, I missed one. <laughs> All right, backtrack. Six or seven, that's what we are talking about, is walking according to his commandments. Really? This have you heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who confess the coming, who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, such as any one is the deceiver and the antichrist. 
Watch yourself so you may not lose what we've worked for, but may win a full reward. Let's go back to what I was saying. The Mercedes and Jets. <clears throat> so 9 through 13, the tail end of the book. Everyone who goes on ahead does not abide in the teaching of Christ, does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring his teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. Whoever greets him takes part in his wicked ways. I thought I have much to write to you. I would rather not use paper and ink. It said I hope to come and talk to you face to face so that the joy may be complete. Those who do not believe in the teaching are not believers and do not receive him. They're fake Christians. Or, Katrina, what's my favorite saying? Come on, you're in after hours. You, you, I, it's after hours. <laughs> Sunday Christians. The fake Christians. This is not a Christ follower, follower but a wolf in a, in a suit, a sheep's clothing. The last part of the book and chapter, it's only one chapter, is that there's so much to go over, but he's going to go talk face to face. He doesn't want to write it down. He wants to have a relationship conversation with them. So, Third John. <clears throat> Mr. Person. Children of your elect sister greet you. The point of writing this letter in 3 John was the Apostle John providing guidance to them to, to deal with the issues of the day. They were dealing with pride in the church leaders. They were more worried about themselves and not of the others. I believe this is something that it's still going on in churches today. So you have pastors uh, in this country where they're more worried about their clothing and everything than those in their environment that need help. The single mom who can barely feed. There was a um, sermon we were listening to before movie night by C.L. Shep Shepherd that was providing some really good examples to the kids on what's going on. So, the elder. This is what I was talking about, Ian. You're welcome. <laughs> so the elder, uh, the pastoral leader, and the term has been used in emphasis for 20 years prior. This is to be the Apostle Paul and makes sense since he's providing counsel He's the grandfather providing uh, guidance to the young one. He was the mentor and the guidance, just how Pastor Rich and Chuck are providing me with gui guidance. I mean, the amount of text messages, good thing we don't get charged per text. <laughs> so, hopefully I don't mess this up. Gaius uh, was the faithful Christian believer who was working closely to provide help to vision the vis visiting missionaries. This is normally misconstrued as hospitality. So, Demetrius was a church leader that is mentioned to be an example of the right thing to do. He's working selflessly and his testimony is known to others. I'm going to read it in a second. So, um, And Dio, Dio trust peace. Um, is self, huh? Thank you. <laughs> and I even did the little parentheses that you were. <laughs> yes, uh, he was selfish and all for himself. He was more worried about him and and not the others. So let's let's dive in. The elder to the beloved Gaius whom I love in truth. 
Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Excuse me. So verse 1 through 3 is the introduction. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You want me to go? (laughs) So one through three is the introduction that John's making to the elder. They're showing friendship. This would be the start of a conversation. John's telling the elder that he's joyous that they're walking in truth and showing love. Five. Five is continuing with that. Five three is the support of the traveling Christian workers. It's noble and needy. They're helping the fellow uh, fellow believer. Verse seven, we have uh, John is supporting this by saying that Gaius uh, treats strangers just like friends, and they're thankful and telling John of these things. Key thing that comes up is accepting nothing from the pagans, the travelers. There wasn't, you know, pay five dollars, you know, you're you're good. It was just, hey, you're good. Here's a couch, here's a blanket. We're sorry about the sheep. Travelers do not want to put themselves in that position to be tempted. Verse nine. I missed something. Verse 9, I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put some first, does not acknowledge our authority. Say that five times fast. So if I come, I will bring up what he's doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. And not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stop those who went and put them out of the church. The church discipline can be necessary for the ministry to flourish. How many times has a red-headed stepchild been smacked around a couple of times when they needed it? I knew you were going to do that. The key is when someone in the church receives discipline, they need to understand they're not doing it to be mean, but to show love. I mean, sometimes you need that that friend or the church saying, hey, this is not the right thing to do. We're going to show some love and let's get you on the right track with God. So diotrephes, did I say it right? Kind of close? Okay, I, I'm getting better with that. He's rejecting the guidance that the Apostle John uh, believe he, he has given. He's prideful and thinks that John has no authority over him. You know, this is a local affair. Just stay over there. We got this. However, Apostle John believes in the form of the context that He's trying to be uh, prideful. He has authority over uh, Diotrephes, and he just just wants to help him. (laughs) I mean, he's not trying to be mean. He's not trying to be, you know, the big guy on campus. He's just trying to show some love. So 11 through 15... I missed this slide. 11 through 15. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone. It's from the truth itself. We also in our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. 
I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face. The integrity of faith is proven by actions, not by words. Actions speak louder than words. John's telling us that we cannot imitate what is bad and be seen by God. <clears throat> this goes back to what Pastor Rich said on his message last week. There's a transforma transformation when we become believers. And there's, there's not a transformation that you uh, really have when you, when you don't believe in the Trinity. There's no 50-50 or binary. Verse 12, Demetrius, this mentions continue with the intro I stated previously. If we are not well thought of by outsiders, the world, then we failed into the snare of the evil. If you leave this building and, I mean, you, you're acting in the ways of the world, then you're not being the Bible that people would, would only see. I mean, we, we have to be that one where, you know, we're in the restaurant saying, hey, what can I pray, you, pray for you for? Or you go in the grocery store and you see that bagger who looks frustrated. Say, hey, it'll be okay. I'll be praying for you. Key thing is be different. All right. This goes along with 1 Timothy uh, 3 through 7. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders that he may not fail into disgrace into a snare of the devil. To boil it down, if we are being Sunday Christians, we're losing the battle for God. And we're not being good Christian soldiers. 13 through 15. Final greeting. All right. He's wrapping up. He's saying, hey, I got stuff to talk to you about, but we need to talk face to face. John in uh, verse 15 tells the reader, greet fellow believers by name, one on one. This signifies friendship and love that we are commanded to show each other. That's all, folks. Can you clarify um, who the elder is? The elder is John. Okay, I had a feeling it might have gotten a little confused. Yeah, the elder is another way for John to say, to, instead of saying John, it's him. Yeah. Because he's, he's providing guidance to uh, the other two that I can't say very well. <laughs> <laughs> I actually practiced this week too. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, let's pray and enjoy the cookies. Dear Lord, thank you so much uh, for learning about you and just gathering and loving each other, Lord. Thank you for everything and hope we glorify you. Jesus. Thank you for watching or listening to this teaching on demand from Friendship Grace Brethren Church. Please consider sending us an email at info at friendshipgracebrethren.com to let us know how this teaching may have helped you. Please also consider joining us in person at Friendship Grace Brethren Church, located at 10251 Metro Parkway, Suite 116, Fort Myers, Florida, just south of the intersection of Metro and Colonial Boulevard. Sunday school begins at 9 and worship service at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you in person at Friendship Grace Brethren Church.